I mean, corruption is the reason that things are not working in Nigeria. The money that the federal government is making, the state government, and so on and so forth. Look, you understand? Everybody's supposed to enjoy. Hmm. But corruption is killing us. Hmm. And nobody is talking. You know, this one rob the federal government of billions of naira. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's our friend. At we the fought. end of the day, the person will hire maybe 100 lawyers. That is oh. it. That is it. And nothing will happen. That is it. Hmm. They cannot do that in the church. Amen. Amen. Because God of Elijah is there. Hmm. Nobody wants to die. Hmm. So that is it. That is it. So the, 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 I pray that God will turn Nigeria around. Hmm. We need people that fear God. Hmm. People that will embrace discipline. Nobody held the federal uh, government of Nigeria responsible for my inability to go to university. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, people that are shouting that uh, some member of winner pay this, they pay that, and uh, the children could not go to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to higher institution. First and foremost, going to higher institution in Nigeria is our federal government's responsibility. Hmm. Number two, the family responsibility. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the churches that are letting helping hands. Hmm. God for what winner is contributing. Thank God for what redeem is contributing. Thank God for what uh, Baba uh, Waliok is, is contributing to the ex, uh, 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 educational growth of Nigeria. Uh, Christ Apostolic Church, thank God for them. The Apostolic Church, thank God for them. So many of them, hmm. we appreciate God in their life. What about the individual that started the, the university? You understand? And they are charging even more than what winner is charging. Even more than what we did, we started. nobody is talking about them. Why is it that we hate church? Hmm. Why? There is something about the issue of tight payment. Hmm. It's not compulsory. Amen. Hmm. It's not, if you like, you know, some people are going to church without giving offering. It doesn't make any difference. Some people are going to church without paying tight. It doesn't make any difference. In fact, Mr. Moderator, I want to tell you, so many people that are shouting about tight today, they are the people that don't pay tight. Hmm. When you see people talking about the church, talking about that church, how they are spending the money, how this, how they are the people who has never contributed anything, and they will never contribute anything. The very first time when I had the issue of a DNA in the church, I became a same of myself. How come? God, what is happening? Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a testimony of a woman said, my husband could not perform and I have to help him. You imagine what a dirty expression. And what kind of help? No, no, by, by sleeping with uh, other men around. Oh. She has four uh, children, four fathers. Things are happening. Hmm. You understand? If, if, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the believers. Hmm. So this one we could say and say God told me, you know, I I I, I became something else when I heard that a man of God said that God told him to divorce his wife. Hmm. We have we have gotten to that level of madness. The special grace of the Almighty God, the King has come. Hmm. You no, know, everything that we turn things around, we have some attack. Hmm. There will be problem, arrow here, arrow there. But my brother. Thank God I'm from Obama, so the Lord will prevail. We will continue to pray for peace of the land. And God will have his own way. In the name of Jesus, I want to plead with our royal father. Carry everybody along. People that are praising you and people that are cursing you. Or carry everybody along. You are our father. Hmm. God has ordained you to be our father. And as of today, as far as Obama so is concerned, I'm not talking about tomorrow. Gandhi is our father. For more prophecies and gospel news around the world, subscribe to 12 Star TV and turn on notifications. I thank God for, for the word of God. It doesn't matter whatever interpretation that we give, it to, we give to it, the word of God remains the same. Hmm. I agree that it's not a big thing for a child of God to pay tight. Hmm. I do pay tight. And I know even before I started this ministry, I've been paying tight. And I can I cannot count 
so many things that God did for me through this tithe payment. So people will say, well, payment of the tithe is limited to the uh, Old Testament. I don't agree with that. Mm. And I will never agree with that. The Bible remains the same. Mm. And Jesus came to this world. He didn't uh, instruct us not to pay tithe. He said we should fulfill all the law. And that is what the Bible is all about. So I want to say it very clearly that it is biblical for us to pay tithe. But there is something about the issue of tithe payment. Mm. It's not compulsory. Amen. Mm. It's not, if you like, you know, some people are going to church without giving offering. It doesn't make any difference. Some people are going to church without paying tithe. It doesn't make any difference. In fact, Mr. Moderator, I want to tell you, so many people that are shouting about tithe today, they are the people that don't pay tithe. Hmm. When you see people talking about the church, talking about that church, how they are spending the money, how this, how they are the people who has never contributed anything, and they will never contribute anything. Hmm. Empty barren make noise. Nice. Let me tell you something about myself. Okay. Some years ago, when I started this ministry, there was no money. I told you, and let me tell you again, I started this ministry with 100 Naira. Hmm. When God instructed me to start the church, a pastor tasked me 100 Naira. That was all that I had to start this ministry. So I was struggling, I was praying, I was fasting, I was, you know, expecting breakthrough from God. And the one early money, I was praying the money, and God instructed me, David, go to Christian Fine Yard uh, Church at Mushi, I want to show you something. Mm. And I dress up, I enter my car with one of my daughters, and then we went there. When we got there, we met Archbishop, the was of blessed memory. He was teaching, and there were more than 400 pastors who were there. As soon as I enter, in fact, I wanted to sit down, then Baba made this uh, statement. I want a pastor who can dash me 3,000 naira. Hmm. <laughs> Baba Idawusa wanted somebody that would dash him 3,000 naira. I had it. I jumped. I ran. I was thinking that other pastors, you know, who go before me, that so many pastors who rush to the podium to give the 3,000 naira. Nobody stood up. Hmm. It was only me. And then when I got to him, he asked me, kneel down. And I knelt down. He laid his hands on me. He said, how much do you have? First and foremost, bring out the money. Let's see how much that you have. So I brought everything inside my pocket out. It was then 3,200 naira. Baba said, I changed my mind. I want everything. And I gave everything to him. Hmm. And he started praying. And he started praying. And he started praying. He started praying. I, it, you know, it got to a stage I could, I could no longer say amen. I started crying. The prayer was too much. Hmm. And the Archbishop uh, John Ostanichu was there. He couldn't hold it anymore. He, all, he also laid his hands on my shoulders. And they started praying along with Baba. And after the and after the meeting, the first miracle I got is this. My fuel, the fuel inside my car has already uh, entered, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's, you know, it's already so red light. Praise the Lord. Mm. And then I, I was, I said within myself, how would I get to Ikotun from Mushi? I'm on reserve. And the Lord told me, do not shut up the engine. Just go as you are going. The first miracle was that the car did not stop on the way until we enter here. Hallelujah. Mm. That was the first miracle. That same day, somebody walked into this place and handed over to me 25,000 naira. He said, God instructed me to come and give you this money today. Mm. And he handed over the money to me. Two days later, somebody else came and gave me 320,000 naira. Few weeks later, another one came and bought a property that worth 2 million naira for me then. Praise the Lord. Now, people that are criticizing tight payment, what about the benefit that we derive? 
Hmm. What about people that pay tight and God turn their life around? What about people that pay tight and God turn their business around? Amen. Hmm. God used just under 93,200 naira to turn my life around. Hmm. All that you see here today, Ghana Church, Obama, whatever, whatever it is, just 3,200 naira. Hmm. Hallelujah. So, people that are criticizing tight this and that, nobody is forcing anybody. Oh, you know, Baba, oh, you know, has never forced anybody. Baba, you know, has never forced anybody. Nobody has ever forced anybody. It's your choice. Hmm. Amen. It's your choice to pay. It's your to pay or not to pay. Hmm. Make, make up your mind, whatever you want. Hallelujah. Go. If you pay, the benefit is there. If you don't pay, the benefit is there. But sir, um, concerning the, the tithes, because um, let's look at um, uh, winners for example. Yes. Because a lot of people said that they collected money from the church member to build the university and at the end of the day, the, the members, they cannot avoid the school fees. Okay, now, thank God, we also have our own small something here, school here, hmm. and I know what it is. I know to, to, to run a school. To run a school. I know what it is. I know what it entails. Mm. You understand? Uh, when I will pay for the lecturers, mm. amen. They will do a lot of things. Library, you know, building this and that. Everything is there. It's money. Praise the Lord. And uh, if you are to get a good lecturer, a good professor, you pay a lot of money. And that is what is happening at Covenant University. And that is what is happening at Redeem uh, University. Redeem as University and so on and so forth. So, people uh, that are members, you understand? Okay, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Okay. You know, there are millions of people, they are Nigerian. And they could not avoid, you know, their children could not go to an institution. I was, I fallen into that category. Hmm. After I left my secondary school, Nobody to sponsor me to higher institution. Nobody held the federal uh, government of Nigeria responsible for my inability to go to university. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, people that are shouting that uh, some member of Mwina pay this, they pay that, and that the children could not go to uh, to uh, to uh, to higher institution. First and foremost, going to higher institution in Nigeria is our federal government responsibility. Hmm. Number two, the family responsibility. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the churches that are letting helping hands. Hmm. Thank God for what Wina is contributing. Thank God for what Redeem is contributing. Thank God for what uh, Baba uh, Walioke is, is contributing hmm. to the ex, uh, 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 educational growth of Nigeria. Uh, Christ Apostle Church, thank God for them. The Apostolic Church, thank God for them. So many of them, hmm. we appreciate God in their life. What about the individual that started a, a university? You understand? And they are charging even more than what Mwina is charging. Even more than what Redeem is charging. Nobody is talking about them. Why is it that we hate church? Hmm. Why is it that we hate righteousness? Why is it that we hate the fear of the Lord? Let me tell you something. Okay. It's, it's like this. Winners, Redeems, Christ's Apostolic Church, the Apostolic Church, whosoever that built a church that had a university today, they're supposed to be commended. Hmm. We're supposed to appreciate them. How, sir? How much are they getting compared to what gov and federal government is, is getting? Hmm. You understand? But the fear of God, righteousness, discipline, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Because, look for an example now, we now will not allow corruption, which is really supreme in Nigeria. Hmm. Redeem will not allow corruption, which is really supreme in Nigeria. Christ's apostolic church will not allow. The apostolic church will not allow. Hmm. Even, you know what I discover? Even these uh, individual people that build universities, they will not allow it. Hmm. You understand? So that is why things, cor uh, I mean, corruption is the reason that things are not working in Nigeria. The money that the federal government is making, the state government, and so on and so forth. Look, you understand? Everybody's supposed to enjoy. Hmm. But corruption is killing us. Hmm. And nobody is talking. 
You know, this one rob the federal government of billions of naira. Oh, yeah, is uh, is our friend. At we the fought. end of the day, the person will hire maybe hundred lawyers. That is wow. it. That is it. And nothing will happen. That is it. Hmm. They cannot do that in the church. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Because God of Elijah is there. Hmm. Nobody wants to die. Hmm. So that is it. That is it. So the the the, 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 the I pray that God will turn Nigeria around. Hmm. We need people that fear God, mm. people that will embrace discipline and the fear of the Lord. Mm. That is what we need to turn things around in Nigeria. Mm. When some years ago, when they started talking about change, talking about change, I said, anyone that will cause a change in Nigeria, mm. he himself must be changed. Mm. Are you hearing me? It takes transformation to transform others. It takes discipline to discipline order. But are they, are they not change? Uh, anyway, negatively. So to say, I'm sorry to say that. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Negatively. Hmm. So that is it. To me, I think uh, if uh, uh, in a country like this where we have, you know, all this general, there was the day I was praying one morning and God told me, he said, there are some generals in Nigeria. When they wake in the morning and shout, praise the Lord, the angel in heaven will be at attention. Hmm. They want to hear the next thing to do. Praise the Lord. God did not mention Baba Adeboy, but I know he is one of them. Praise the Lord. Anytime I have problems, anytime I have difficulties, and I dream and I see Baba in my dream, the problem is over. Hmm. Anytime I dream and I see uh, Bisobo Adebo, my problem is over. These people need to be respected. Oh. We must not allow them to go like that. Hmm. Let us tap into that grace. Hmm. Let's learn from them. So as to know how to run things. Hmm. And then the Almighty God will help us. Amen. Nigeria belongs to all of us. The issue of Nigeria is not limited to tight. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Tight is there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There are so many other things. Hmm. Corruption is our, you know, our, our major problem. Mm. And God will help us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Mm. And there's this I, another question that I want to ask concerning uh, a lot, there are a lot of men of God these days yeah. that um, divorce their wife mm. due to many things. Yeah. But initially in the church, I think uh, this don't usually happen before. But this is it has become a normal thing that. Any little misunderstanding, everybody will find their way, including the head of the church. Uh, well, uh, I I said something last week. God has not called me to be a marriage counselor. Okay. But nevertheless, I will say the little that I can say. Hmm. Where we are, we are talking about the problem of Nigeria now, we say corruption. Now, looking at the issue of divorce, the problem is lack of love. Hmm. You understand? The fear of God is dying in the church. Fear of God. Yes. Hmm. It's no longer there. The real love, the agape love that Jesus came to show us is dying in the church. Hmm. You understand? So this one we could say and say, God told me, you know, I, 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 I became something else when I heard that a man of God said that God told him to divorce his wife. Hmm. We, have, we have gotten to that level of madness. You understand? Hmm. I don't know the sin that your husband might have committed against you or your wife committed against you that you cannot forgive one another. Somebody else told me the other time and said, my wife is demonic. That was the essence of your speaking in tongues. Hmm. If your wife is demonic, cast out the devil. That's what the word of God tells us. Maybe he didn't have the enough power to cast. Then take that woman to somebody else. Hmm. That's why all of us who have father in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There must be mentor. If you cannot handle it, your anointing cannot handle it. Hmm. You understand? Somebody else anointing will handle it. Sir, sir um, because you said you don't know how we go to the, that highest level of madness yes. in the church. Yes. But there are some issues these days concerning DNA. Um. <laughs> in the case whereby maybe a pastor, General Fasia, discovered that maybe the wife has been going out with another person or maybe one of their son does not belong to the now, 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 let me tell what you something. is the way out i'm coming okay. i'm coming okay so people will reap the fruit of lies 
Are you hearing me? Yes. I know. And I can remember. So many of them will say, uh, will say, God told me this is my wife. At the beginning. At the beginning. Oh. I saw her. I was about to fall. <laughs> and as he lifted me, oh. I saw him when I was about to draw water from the well. And he came and helped me. Hmm. Liars. Can you believe Liars. Okuro no baju. Olorun o le yan oko fun o. Hmm. Ko lo ma se se kute ko lo ma rin le kure. Ko lo gbo yun ta. Ko lo gbo man ta. Ko wa gbe foko. E ri pe foundation yen right from the beginning. Hmm. No ti daru. From the beginning. Right from beginning. Are you getting me? Yes. The very first time when I had the issue of a DNA in the church, I became a same of myself. How come? God, what is happening? Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a testimony of a woman said, my husband could not perform and I have to help him. You imagine what a dirty expression. And what kind of help? Is no, no by, by sleeping with uh, other men around. Oh. She has four uh, children, four fathers. Things are happening. Hmm. You understand? If it, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the believers. Hmm. Hmm. You understand? You understand? Yes. Hey, I'm not surprised if an unbeliever behave like that, hmm. do anything like that. It's not, I'm, I'm not surprised. But believer, somebody who is born again, speaking in tongues, an only ghost man, an only ghost woman. Hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't really know. I don't really know what, what, what is happening. Now, I had the other time when the women are saying, if your husband is beating you, if your husband is gonna, let, let me tell you, lack of love that we are talking about. Mm. How can uh, a pastor, how can a bishop, how can, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Amen. But we are so, we have descended so low, mm. so low, we are no longer ashamed of what we ought to be ashamed of. Hmm. You understand? We are majoring in the minor, a minor in the major. Hmm. You understand? The real thing that concerns God, the real thing that build up a family, we just neglected it, abandoned it. Hmm. I'm pursuing, you know, I want to get this, I want to get that, I want to get this, I want to get that. You understand? Even people that are preaching righteousness, they are not living righteously. Hmm. Even people that are shouting holiness, most of them are not holy. Hmm. That's why they have. That's why we have the problem. Amen. Amen. So I pray God will help us. I think all of us we need to go back to Calvary. Hmm. We need to go back to Calvary. Church is the reason that Jesus has not come back. My viewer, wherever you are, I don't know what you are passing through, but God Almighty is up to the task. I don't know what is happening to your business. I don't know what is happening to your family. I don't know, honestly speaking, but I'm concerned. Remember the word of God in Psalm 23, verse number 5. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, because thou art with me. God is with you, and God will never abandon you. If you are passing through topless time, maritally or otherwise, God will see you through. In the name of Jesus. If your business is not doing well, if your business is not working, I'm praying the Almighty God will see you through. You have paid tight before and then you have not gotten the benefit of tight payment. I want to tell you, your miracle is coming. For God Almighty will step into your matter in the name of Jesus. In 2 Kings chapter 7, we saw the story of Eliza and the city of Samaria. Mm -hmm. And that is what I want to use to pray right now in the name of Jesus. 24 hours miracle. Mm -hmm. 24 hours miracle. I don't know what you are passing through. I don't know what is your body. But hear the word of the Lord. Within the next 24 hours, your problem will be over. Within the next 24 hours, your sickness will, will be over. Within the next 24 hours, the Lord will turn your life around. Within the next 24 hours, you will encounter the financial breakthrough that you desire. Within the next 24 hours, the Lord will deliver you from the oppression of power of darkness in the name of Jesus.